Right now on News 4 and 6, the Bills headed to the AFC Championship. We'll show you how Western New York is feeling after last night's huge win. And some lake effect snow is in the forecast across Western New York. I am tracking it. I'll let you know how much we can expect coming up. And Erie County cancels its vaccination clinics because of a low supply. What a local health care worker whose appointment was canceled is worried about. News 4 at 6 starts right now. You're watching News 4, your local news leader. Now, live from Buffalo, this is News 4 at 6. This is one of the best games that Jim Kennedy had. Josh Allen and that defense was spectacular today. It's remarkable. This history, this history right here, man. I've been waiting so long, year after year, sitting here and not getting to the playoffs and losing. This is the best thing. Pinch yourself, Buffalo. You are not dreaming today. The Bills are headed to the AFC Championship. Good evening and a very happy Victory Sunday to you. The question left to answer is, who is standing between Buffalo and the Super Bowl? Well, that'll come down to the Browns-Chiefs game. Right now, Kansas City in the lead with time running out in the fourth. If the Browns can turn this around and win, the Bills would host the AFC Championship game in Orchard Park. News 4 Sports' Paul Stockman joins us with a recap of last night's game and a look at what's next for the Bills. Paul? Well, what's next? Uh, Bills Mafia, your Buffalo Bills are heading to the AFC Championship. I'm going to quote the wrestler Chris Jericho and say, drink it in, man, but don't pop a little bit of the bubbly just yet. Sean McDermott already said, hey, they're not done. Lots more work to do. They'll go over the film of last night's game today. They'll put that to bed as they get ready for the next opponent. But hey, we, the media, we're still in that 24-hour role, so we can still talk about last night's game. Left tackle Deion Dawkins said it was a party in the locker room after the final whistle. And it was no doubt a party all throughout the city. And this Bills Mafia certainly gave those players the extra boost last night when they needed it inside the stadium. I'm talking about the whole stadium was VIP section. Everybody was out there doing their thing, doing their dance and stuff. But I'm telling you, man, a uh, special place. The Mafia comes out, they do what they do, and they let their presence be felt. And uh, I honestly just hope everybody gets home safe because I'm pretty sure everybody was turned. I mean, turned the right way. You know, we had no problems. The fans came out and did exactly what they do and what they've been doing. And that's just doing their job. They've been doing their part. They can sat on the side. They let them in, and they're here to show, and they're here to shine, and they've been doing this since play one, since warm-ups, you know, and we love them. Those are my friends. What a night the Bills had. I think Dion had as good a night as anybody else. We'll, of course, go over the big win and a key moment later in sports, but in the world of that 24-hour rule, as I said, those te the team's probably going to already be looking ahead later on tonight. Now, as of right now, if things hold, they will play Kansas City in the next round. That game will be on the road, but... Still plenty of time to talk about that in the days to come. For now, just enjoy it, Bills Mafia. Paul Stockman, News 4 Sports. I just love seeing all the players dance around the field and getting the crowd pumped up. Well, Buffalo police say they are preparing to beef up patrols for next week. Fans flooded the streets around City Hall and the newly renamed Josh Allentown last night after the win. BPD tells News 4 they'll be releasing more details on this later in the week. Well, Bills Mafia is once again doing its thing to support Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson after he was hurt during last night's game. Jackson was pulled at the end of the third quarter because of the con concussion protocol. Bills fans have since started donating to Blessings in a Backpack in $8 chunks. It's a charity based in Louisville where Jackson played college football. The organization feeds kids on weekends when they're not in school. Blessings in a Backpack says it's received more than 9,000 donations since midnight. And coming up tonight at 10 and 11, you'll hear the organization's shock and gratitude toward Buffalo fans. A local company is also getting in the giving spirit. M&T Bank says it's donating money to poncho packs. The company will give $2 up to $12,000 for every Bill's photo commented on a post through its Facebook page. We have a link to that post on the Fountain Out 4 tab of WIVB.com. And inspired by our incredible football season, a Western New York dance teacher is sharing her love of the Buffalo Bills with her students. News 4's Abby Fridman tells us how the Kiptum Dance Center is getting ready to cheer on the team one tap at a time. Empty, 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 empty. 
Overwhelmed with a familiar feeling from decades ago, Don Tarbox Zerbiak choreographed a tap routine for her Kip Tom Dance Center students with the hope of turning them into believers. I wanted these kids to feel the same way that we did when I was in the 90s. I wanted them to know about their community spirit. Decked head to toe in Bill's gear, the dancers made their way around a very windy western New York, dancing in front of iconic locations. I got really excited because I thought this would be super fun to do. It's like to support the team, especially because they're going to the playoffs and they're making it farther than they have. Once we got it, it was really like fast and simple. Now Don is putting together a video with the Buffalo Bills anthem by local musician Dom Brown. She says she's excited because now her students know what it truly means to be a Bills fan. I think we need to understand that it goes beyond just football. This is about a community and how a community gathers together and also the mafia of how they support other other um, charities and, and families that need help. A lifelong fan herself, even naming her puppy after Marv Levy. Don is passing on the spirit on par with the rest of Bill's Mafia. We're going to the Super Bowl, right, baby? Yeah, Bill! So we're in the Super Bowl! Go Bills! And spreading it out to the next generation. Go Bills! Abby Fridman, News 4. And don't forget, we are now exactly one week away from the AFC Championship game. We're learning now the Bills will take on the Chiefs. Kickoff set for 640, and you can catch all the action over on Channel 4. All right, let's head to your forewarned weather now. Downtown Buffalo looking calm right now, but change is coming. And as Dion Dawkins would say, <laughs> you already snow. And snow is exactly what meteorologist John Cubitt is tracking tonight. John? That's what we are looking at, Erica. Some lake effect, a little bit more intense than what we saw last night for the game. It's held off about a day. But we are going to continue to track it not only for tonight, but as well as tomorrow. So for MLK Day, we're going to really get into some good accumulating snow. I'll let you know what spots are going to be impacted the most. 36 for right now here in Buffalo. Feels like 28 with that wind chill blowing at about 13 miles per hour. And we're looking at numbers here in and around the mid to upper 30s across western New York. We head down to the South Towns. We're looking at 32 in North Collins, 31 in Colden. Cooler spots, but all in all, we're still another mild day on tap. We'll get into a few more colder days as we head into next week. But for right now, your satellite and radar picture, we're continuing to see that lake effect snow just to the south of the metro. We're going to get into some more of it as we head into the overnight hours as this system will push a little bit more northward. Um, some more snow will start to develop up along Orleans as well as Niagara County. And again, that's because we have some pretty decent winds blowing at about 10 upwards to 13 miles per hour. Coming up later on in your, in your extended forecast, you know, I have a snow map letting you know how much we can expect and what parts across western New York with this lake effect heading into tomorrow. Erica. Thank you, John. Thousands of Erie County residents set to get their first round of the COVID-19 vaccine now have to wait. The county canceled its vaccination clinics through this upcoming week because of a low supply. News 4 Sarah Minkowitz caught up with a health care worker who's upset with the whole process. She joins us live from downtown Buffalo with more. Sarah. Erica, I talked to Brittany Kaza, who works as a medical assistant. She says she has a lot of high risk patients, so she was excited to get the vaccine to lessen her chances of getting sick or getting her patients sick. She was scheduled to receive the Moderna vaccine this week at Erie County Community College. But just like 3,500 other people with appointments, they were all canceled due to a low supply of vaccines. Kaza says it wasn't an easy process to schedule her appointment, that she experienced long wait times on the phone was disconnected at one point. So for this to happen, she says was upsetting. An appointment to begin with aggravating in itself. And then I received the email yesterday that they were canceling the appointments for this week. And of course, I fell right in those three days. So that kind of prohibits. I mean, I'm ready to get back to normalcy. I mean, even if it's a new normal. So it's just extremely disappointing, really. We did catch up with infectious disease expert Dr. Thomas Russo. He says he understands the frustrations, but says this is encouraging because it shows more people are interested in being vaccinated. And now it's a matter of the supply meeting the demand. Officials say these cancellations are not for people who were scheduled to get their second dose of the vaccine, just for people scheduled for the first dose of it. For now, reporting live in downtown Buffalo, Sarah Mikowitz, News 4.
Thank you, Sarah. And still to come at 6, Vice President Mike Pence gives his final speech here in the Empire State, the message he had for soldiers stationed in upstate New York. Plus, we are days away from the inauguration. We're looking at the security measures still being put in place.